The Lord be with you this morning. It is good to be here with you in worship, whether you are joining in person or online. I hope this is a wonderful time of worship for you this morning. Thanks to those who are helping with worship this morning. On organ, we have our guest organist, Karen Kunitsky. Thank you, Karen. Our technical director this morning is Tom Graham. Our liturgist today is Susan Catanzarito. And our acolyte today is Gabe Benish. He's a good one. I like him. <laughs> our chancel flowers this morning were given with love in memory of Peter Lichkew by Linda Smialowski. So thank you for that as well. You are all invited for fellowship hour after service today. Come down and eat and enjoy snacks. And if you enjoy fellowship hour, we're always looking for hosts as well. There is a sign-up sheet on the deacon's table over there. This week, the session will be meeting tomorrow night at 645 in the lounge. So for those of you who are elders, please come to that. Also, my congregational resource team for my Doctor of Ministry project will be meeting on Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock in the lounge. So if you're part of that, uh, please come. Please come. It's helpful for me. Uh, other things that are happening, we are looking still for office volunteers to help answer phones and greet people and do small administrative tasks. If you are available during the week, we would love for you to come up and help. Uh, 10 to 1, Monday through Thursday, uh, there's a sign-up sheet on the deacon's table as well for that. It's really easy, I promise. Bring a book, bring a snack, uh, it'll, it'll be fun for all. Willing workers are collecting toilet paper rolls, empty toilet paper rolls for a future craft. So if you have any of those, uh, save them up and feel free to drop them off in the church office. We are also working on updating our records. Thanks to those of you who filled out the form uh, either online or written last week. If you have not done that yet, we would greatly appreciate that. For those of you who are here, uh, there's a one in your announcements insert. There's also a QR code you can scan and do a form online. If we can get one per person, that's helpful, especially when it comes to birthdays and that kind of thing. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, we have a lot of exciting things coming up. Save the date for Vacation Bible School starting on July 19th. That will be Wednesday evenings. Nancy, do you have anything to add about that? Uh, I just like to say on Wednesday, June 21st, um, we have a Spirit Wednesday where we have a Bible study and we So that's Wednesday, June 21st at what time? 7 o'clock here at the church uh, for volunteers, a meeting to get everything organized. So if you've been asked to volunteer or want to volunteer, please come then. If you have questions about VBS, you can talk to Nancy. Uh, a reminder for anyone who is volunteering, they do need up-to-date clearances. So you can um, check with me, I guess, <laughs> um, or send an email to the church office and we uh, will make sure you have your clearances up to date. And there'll be more information about registration for kids coming soon. Um, I've also been asked to invite all of you today, if you would like, to um, visit our alley. We have a new friend, a little plant out there. About 10 guys came to plant it this week. We're trying something new to see if we can actually get greenery out there instead of rocks. So we're really trying to make it feel welcome and at home, and we want to see this plant succeed. <laughs> um, Pete and I discussed having a naming contest. We'll see. Um, but so check out, check out the plant. It looks really nice out there and, and make friends. <laughs> Are there any other announcements to share this morning? Hearing none, then let us prepare our hearts to worship God.
morning. Come, Holy Spirit, wind of God and breath of life. Come, Holy Spirit, our advocate. Oh, I forgot. Wait a second. Please rise in body or spirit and let us join together in our responsive call to worship. <laughs> the, name. the name. The name. I'll start again. Come, Holy Spirit, wind of God and breath of life. Come, Holy Spirit, our advocate and counselor. Come, Holy Spirit, teacher of wisdom and reminder, reminder of Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, grantor of forgiveness and giver of peace. May we feel God's breathing through our worship. May we receive the Holy Spirit in this place. Let us join together in our unison opening prayer. Holy One, for all the ways you speak to us, in rushing winds, in dancing flames, in words we understand, and in all the transcending language, we give thanks. Give us courage to speak your love wherever we go and to everyone we meet. Amen. days. That's all right. <laughs> we turn to God in prayer, not because we must, but because we are compelled. Or not because we are compelled, but because God invites us. We come to God not because of our righteousness, but because of God's grace. In that spirit, let us join together to offer this prayer of confession and unburdening. Let us pray. God of renewal, we confess that we sometimes close windows against the fresh air of new ideas, the noise of other people's worries, and the winds of change. We confess that we often draw the curtains against people who are different world news or community concerns. Forgive our insulation in our locked homes, our shuttered churches, and the security systems on our hearts. Open up our lives and let your spirit blow through. Hear this prayer, O oh God, and hear us as we lift our silent confessions before you now.
Hear our prayers, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, the God of creation is a God of mercy. God is quick to forgive, and God's promise of restoration is for all people. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. now take a moment to share the peace of Christ with one another. Those of you who are here in person, feel free to turn around and wave, and the peace of Christ be with you at home as well. at home. You can come a little closer and my friends are invited up here for a story today. <laughs> a lot of nurses in here. It's okay. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful, huh? All right, so all summer for Children's Times, we're going to be reading books that have to do with the Bible story. And this, today's book, Say Hello by Rachel Isadora. Now, before we start reading, what, what do you notice on the cover here? What do you see? A bunch of words that mean hello in different languages. What do you see? <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, there's lots of different languages. So let's, um, let's go ahead and read it, and we'll see. Oh, there's some more Yo. inside Yo. there. Yep, yo. All right, so this is Say Hello by Rachel Isadora. Carmelita gets up early in the morning. She helps her mama to make their favorite breakfast, huevos con tocino. Do you know what that is? Can you guess? Eggs and... Bacon. Eggs and bacon. Yep, that's Spanish. Today we visit Abuela Rosa, Mama says. Do you know what Abuela means? Grandma. Grandma. So they're, she's going to go visit her Grandma Rosa. After breakfast, Carmelita hurries and gets dressed, then gets Manny. Who is Manny? The dog. The dog. He plays a very important role in this book. Okay? Well, you'll see. He is on the front cover. That's a good indication. What if there is an astute dog? Wow. Let's keep reading. Let's see. They walk all the way down 9th Avenue. Buenos dias, Senor Enrico calls. Buenos dias. What do you think that means? Hello. hello. It's, it's one way to say hello. It means good day. Good day. But it's a way we greet one another. And what does Manny say? Mm. Speaking dog. He's speaking Spanish, I think. He's speaking dog Spanish, yes. right? Dog Portuguese. Yeah. Shalom, says Mrs. Rosen and her children. Shalom. What does shalom mean? Uh, hello. It's a way to greet people. Hello. It literally means peace. It's the Hebrew word for peace. So that's how they greet each other. They say peace. That's pretty cool, huh? Woof. And what does Manny say? Woof. Woof. Yeah, which is shalom in dog, right? Yeah. Well, to human ears, it sounds the same, yeah. They stop in at the Japanese restaurant to say hello. Do you know what this word is? Konichiwa. Can you say that? Konichiwa. That's how you say hi in Japanese. And Manny says, Woo! You're really good at being Manny. I like it. <laughs> Down the street, they meet Joseph and his parents, who have just come back from Kenya. What do they say? Jambo. Jambo. 
child book. I mean, I'm going to cheat for a second and see what language that is. Swahili. Swahili. That's the way to say hi. You say Jombo? Jombo. And what does Manny say? Yeah. Jombo and dog. They pass by a bakery. Carmelita stops to look in the window. Let's go in to get some cookies, her mama says. And then how do they greet each other? Bonjour. Bonjour. Yeah. French. French. Mm -hmm. French. And what does Manny say? Woof. And what does this dog say? Woof. And the lady says, your dog speaks French too. That's pretty cool, huh? Dog, dog French. Dog French. Yeah, they're saying bonjour. Ooh, this is a fun one. Al salam a alaikum. Can you try that? Say al salam a alaikum. Do you know what language that is? Uh, no. Arabic. Arabic. And it's the way they greet each other, but it actually means the peace of God be with you. That's a very nice way to greet one another, isn't it? Mouthful. It is a mouthful, yeah. Yeah. And yep. But it's really easy in dog, right? Yeah. yeah. Woof. Okay, okay. So now they go to a pizza shop. What do they say? Ale? Close. Ciao. Oh. Yeah, it's Italian. Ciao. Did you know it's spelled like that? It's hi and bye. Yeah, hi and bye. Kind of like aloha, right? Yeah, I've heard that. I just don't know what lesson gives it is. Well, can you guess? So they're at a pizza place. What do you think? Uh huh. Italian. I wonder if there's going to be Hawaiian in here because aloha literally means just different things because it's the only explanation that is. Yep, yeah, aloha is a good word. That aloha is not in here, but that would be a good one. Yeah, so ciao is Italian, means hi and bye. What does that say? Nihau? Close. Ni hao. Ni hao, that's Korean. No, it's not. It's Chinese. <laughs> it's Mandarin Chinese. That's what I meant. Yep. And Manny says, yep. And see, he's talking to like different dogs. In the park, Carmelita meets her friends Max and Angel. That's Spanish for angel. And Carmelita says, hey. and Max says, Yo. and Angel says, What's up? and Manny says, Woo. yeah. You're one smart Snoop Dogg, Angel says. So how do you say hi to your friends? Hi. Hmm. Good you, morning. Hi, good morning, hello. Good afternoon. good afternoon, good evening. I'd probably greet them by trying to make them laugh. By making them laugh, yeah. Do you ever like give a high five? Say yo, like Max. No. I bet you have fun ways to greet your friends. I don't really like giving high fives because if you want to do it, you have to try to slap me really hard. Okay, well, that's no fun though. When they turn the corner, Abuela Rosa is waiting for them. And what does she say? Hola. 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 It looks like hola though, doesn't it? Yep. It's, yeah, the H is silent. Hola. Hola. And Manny says, mm hmm. What language is that? Hola. Spanish, so we're back to Spanish. Manny seems to know what I'm saying, Abuela Rosa says with a wink. Manny knows how to say hello in many languages, Carmelita says smiling. Do you remember what languages Manny can speak? A bunch. A bunch. Yeah. Jingle, jingle. It's the ice cream truck, Abuela Rosa says. And Manny says, that means Manny wants some too, Carmelita says, and gives Manny a big hug. All right, so this next page, it shows all the hellos we said. And it tells you how to say them. So, also, bonjour, buenos dias, ciao, hola, jambo, konnichiwa, ni hao, and shalom. So now you know how to say hello in all these languages. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. 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 Yeah, okay. So you can go out. That's why this book is called Say Hello. Pretty cool, huh? Why not Portuguese? Well, I, well, there's a lot more languages in the world that we didn't cover. Millions. Millions. Yeah. Yeah. But it's kind of fun to know different languages, right? To know little bits of different languages. Do you know any other languages? Do you know how to say things? Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. I know some um, swear words in my grandparents' language, but I can't share them in church. <laughs> they spoke Czech. Um, 
So there are lots of different languages. Is one better than another? No. no. There are some things that we say in English that you can't say in other languages, and there are some things in other languages that in English. There's not a good translation. And it can cause issues sometimes, but it's also kind of fun, right? Yeah, so, uh huh. Yep. Yep. So, when you hear another language, what I want you to do is not think, oh, that sounds weird. Because sometimes that's what we think that sounds weird, or if somebody has an accent that that's weird. It's not, it's just different from ours. It's not better, it's not worse, it's just another cool way that people communicate. And we'll give thanks to God for that, okay? All right, can you pray with me? Thank you, God, for giving us words in lots of languages. No matter what language we speak, may we speak love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Okay, you can remain seated. <laughs> Let us pray. Spirit God, blow into our lives, move us to action, and break down the walls that separate us. Where our language divides, offer us translation. Where our fear overcomes, fill us with the fire of courage. Where our lives are stagnant, Fill our sails with wind, moving us forward into the unknown future. Fill us with hope and promise. Amen. Our psalm of the day is Psalm 104, and we will be reading verses 24 through 34 from the New Revised Standard Version Updated Edition. This is a song about God as creator and provider. Listen now for God's word to us. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made all things. The earth is full of your cre creatures. There is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there. Living things, both small and great. There go the ships and the Leviathan, that you form to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles? Who touches the mountains and they smoke? I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to the Lord while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him for I rejoice in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Amen. Our Hebrew Bible reading today comes from Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9 from the Common English Bible. This is the story of the Tower of Babel. Listen now for God's word to us. All people on the earth had one language and the same words. When they traveled east, they found a valley in the land of Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them hard. They used bricks for stones and asphalt for mortar. They said, come, let's build for ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the sky. And let's make a name for ourselves so that we won't be dispersed over all the earth. Then the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the humans built. And the Lord said, there is now one people and they all have one language. This is what they have begun to do. And now all that they plan to do will be possible for them. Come, let's go down and mix up their language there so they won't understand each other's language. Then the Lord dispersed them from there over all of the earth and they stopped building the city. Therefore, it is named Babel, because there the Lord mixed up the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over all the earth. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we speak to you in many languages, spoken and silently. Sometimes we can't even form words. And yet you know what is in our hearts. Hear what we have to say to you today. And in this moment, quiet our minds so that we may hear what you have to say to us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts gathered together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Broadway musical Godspell begins with the prologue titled Tower of Babel. Now here it is spelled B-A-B-B-L-E, like babbling, as opposed to the biblical story, which is B-A-B-E-L, but it's a take on this Bible story. And in the song, we hear from some of the greatest philosophical and theological thinkers in human history, men like Socrates, Thomas Aquinas, Martin Luther, Leonardo da Vinci, and Friedrich Nietzsche. And they each get a chance to share their perspective about God or God's people, and then they all sing together. And they say, so high in my lovely ivory tower of Babel, high above the rabble, greatest mind in history, solving life's sweet mystery, so listen to me. In portraying the Tower of Babel as an ivory tower, God's spell continues a long-held tradition and belief that the original builders were trying to show off their intellectual abilities. For millennia, the story of Babel has been interpreted as one of human arrogance and pride as a story of humanity striving to become like God, and a story of God's intense displeasure and disapproval. The people, this interpretation says, tried to build a tower to heaven, perhaps with the intent of taking it over themselves. As a result, God became infuriated and punished the people by confusing their language and scattering them all over the earth. So, according to this reading, difference, different cultures, different languages, is bad. It is a punishment. It is something we need to overcome. Dr. Theodore Hebert says that this interpretation is quite common, not only in the United States, but all around the world. In his classes at McCormick Theological Seminary in Chicago, he says that he has heard variations of it from students of a variety of racial, ethnic, and cultural backgrounds. 
And in his book, The Beginning of Difference, Discovering Identity in God's Diverse World, Hebert explains that this is no accident, that this is a common interpretation. He writes, the Bible we think we know is not the Bible on the page, but the Bible of its interpreters, the Bible they have put in our minds. We saw that last week, too, with the creation story. In other words, using the Babel story, we have been taught to view difference as dangerous, and not just by religious leaders or scholars or preachers. It's all around us. There was a movie that was a 2006 Golden Globe Best Picture of the Year award winner called Babel, and it begins with a reading of Genesis 11. This interpretation is all around us, and the implication is that the events at the Tower of Babel directly influence the racial, ethnic, and religious tensions of today. But is this the only way to understand the story? Well, Dr. Hebert doesn't think so. In fact, he writes that the story of Babel is really a straightforward and positive story about cultural identity and cultural difference. He says it presents the formation of cultural identity as a normal and admirable human activity. And it views cultural difference not as God's punishment on the world, but as the way God intended the world to be. So last week we looked at the first creation story in Genesis 1 and at how God's plan for creation from the very beginning was far greater than simply what we see on the page. God did not just create light and dark, as the story says, but also dusk and dawn. God did not just create land and sea, but also marshes. God created all that is in between. And it is only because of the spectrum of God's creation do we get things like flightless birds and flying fish and the platypus. What would life be like without the platypus? God's creation extends beyond boundaries and categories, and God calls this all very good. And this theme continues throughout Genesis into the Babel narrative. So immediately prior to Babel, in Genesis chapter 6 through 10, we read the story of Noah and the great flood. Almost all of God's good, beautiful creation has been destroyed, and one family has been chosen to repopulate the earth, to recreate culture and society. So when we read at the beginning of chapter 11, what we read today, that all people on earth had one language, we're not talking about a vast population of people. We're talking about Noah and his family. That's who's left. One family unit. So of course they all speak the same language. For many, though, the problematic part of this story is the tower. Hebert says that the oldest and most virulent misreading of the story views the human activity at the story's beginning as an act of pride and an attempt to assert human autonomy over God. He goes on to say that readers took the tower to represent pride, not because of anything the ominous storyteller says about it, but because that's what they thought it implied. So we read the tower as pride, not because that's what it says, but because that's what we've been taught to believe. In verse 4, the people, and remember, this is Noah's immediate family. The people say, come, let's build for ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the sky, and let's make a name for ourselves. Note that there is no mention of going up the tower to heaven, of trying to get up there. 
There's no mention of a hostile takeover. In fact, building a tower with its top in the heavens was a very common phrase. And it means simply a really, really tall structure. The CEB translate it, translates it as its top in the sky. This is not an act of arrogance or of human pride. The people are making a name for themselves, meaning they are establishing a new way of life after the flood, which is exactly what God wanted them to do. They're settling down. They're building a city with a skyscraper, establishing a unique identity that will hopefully endure and outlive them. The events at Babel are just reconstruction. Hebert writes, in stark contrast to traditional and cynical readings of the story, the storyteller describes the people pursuing one of the most elemental human needs, building a culture in which they could find identity and belonging. In verse 5, God enters the scene. And first, God simply names what's going on. These are one people. They have one language. This is what they've begun to do. And now all that they plan to do will be possible for them. Notice again that God makes no mention of sin or arrogance or pride. God does not express anger or disapproval. In fact, God's statement here is a statement of love. God is saying, look at my people. They set their minds to a task. They're doing what I asked them to do, and they succeeded. The sky is the limit, pun intended, for what they can accomplish. The Hebrew word balal, which is where Babel comes from, it's a play on the Hebrew word balal, and it simply means to mix up. It is used elsewhere in scripture to refer to the mixing of fine flour and oil for offertory cakes to God. Many of our translations use words like confuse or confound, and they're, they're acceptable translations. But that is not what the storyteller is trying to say. The mixing up of language is not meant to be negative. It is not confusion, but addition. The sending out into spaces all around the world is not meant to be confounding, but it is a multiplication of God's people. Having seen the amazing things that the people can do, God took the next step by multiplying their gifts and sending them out to inhabit the world. Hebert puts it this way. The story never criticizes the people's efforts, nor does it describe God's response in negative terms. It does not present the people's work and God's work as oppositional efforts or incompatible goals. He says, by diversifying cultures, God doesn't eliminate the distinctive cultures people build. God simply multiplies them. God doesn't erase the human effort to create common cultures that provide identity and belonging. God simply introduces many of these cultures. The people's work and God's work are not contradictory. They are complementary. In an age and culture today, where difference is seen as suspect, as bad, as even dangerous? What if we took this view instead? What if we viewed difference and diversity as a gift? What if, instead of seeking assimilation or cultural domination, we embraced and even celebrated our differences as a gift from God? What would the world look like? I think it would look pretty great. May it be so. Amen.
please remain seated as we sing our sermon response together. Through the Spirit, we are given different gifts, passions, and ways of offering ourselves to God and God's world. In response, we give back a portion of those gifts so that all the world may know of God's love. To financially support the mission and ministry of Hill Church, you are invited to place your offerings in the plates near the entrances, drop them off during the week, mail them to the church, or give electronically. Please rise in body or spirit as we join together in our unison prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Holy One, as you have given yourself to us, we have given you that seems so little, worship that seems so small, words that never quite get it right. Nevertheless, receive what we offer and transform it by the power of your spirit into enough money, sufficient praise, and worthy words for proclaiming and enacting your peace, justice, and love in the world. Amen. remain risen as we join together in our unison affirmation of faith. Today's confession is adapted from the Confession of Belhar, adopted in 1986 by the Dutch Reformed Church as a statement of repentance and reconciliation over its role in apartheid in South Africa. Let us with one voice confess the faith of the church. We believe that unity is both a gift and an obligation for the Church of Jesus Christ, that through the workings God's Spirit is a binding force, yet simultaneously a reality which must be earned and sought, that this unity must become visible so that the world may believe that separation hostility and hatred between people and groups is sin, which Christ has already conquered, and accordingly, that anything which threatens this unity may have no place in the church and must be resisted. Amen. Please be seated.
We come together now to share our joys and our concerns so we can be in prayer for and with one another. Today we continue to pray for those we love who are living with cancer. We uh, especially lift up Carol Gadsby's daughter, Kelly, uh, my step-grandpa, Bob Ray. We continue to pray for Aiden Bartley, a juvenile with pancreatic cancer. We pray for our friend Shirley Brown, and we continue to pray for Barb Graham's dad, Henry, as he uh, is recovering from a procedure. Uh, we also previously have prayed for Tim Rafferty, who is the husband of a former co-worker of David's. He has brain cancer and is um, nearing the end of that journey. And so we pray for him and for his wife, Kata. And we also pray for a current co-worker of David's, Maria, who was just diagnosed with esophageal cancer. And she's still trying to figure out what treatment looks like, but prayers for her uh, as well. We also lift up today Carrie, who is the niece of Barb and Jim Kamer and Becky Bain. She uh, is suffering from preeclampsia after childbirth. Baby is fine and at home with dad, but she is hospitalized. And so we pray for quick healing for her. We lift up those we love who are in nursing homes or assisted living facilities. We continue to pray for Don Lane, for Carol Hall, for Audrey Nosikoff, and for David and Jody Johnston. Jody has now entered hospice care, and so we pray for her and David uh, as that transition takes place as well. Today, uh, I'd also like us to pray for the Jewish community, um, especially the Jewish community in Butler, but all over with the, the trial going on, the Tree of Life trial. It is bringing up a lot of um, emotions for this community. I had a conversation with Cantor McCall uh, earlier this week, and she used to work there. She's very familiar with Tree of Life. She lives in Squirrel Hill, and she knew some of the people who died. And so she's trying to care for her community as she herself is grieving very intensely. And so let us pray um, not just for B'nai Abraham and for Cantor McCall, but for all of those who are being re-triggered as these stories are emerging. Are there other joys or concerns to lift up this morning? Prayers for Nancy Llewellyn. She's having increased pain and difficulty with ambulation. Thank you. Yes, Nancy Llewellyn is um, having hip issues. She's really looking forward to a hip replacement, which is not coming soon enough, and she's um, in a lot of pain. So we pray for her for pain relief and a quick surgery, hopefully. Other joys or concerns this morning? I have two. The first one, safe travels for my parents who are coming back from Florida. And the second one is my friend Val's mother just passed away in a car crash, so I want to have prayers for him. You said Val is your friend? Yes. Okay. So we pray for Jamie Lynn and David as they are traveling back from Florida. Um, yeah, safe travels for them and also prayers for Miranda's friend Val, whose mom uh, was killed in a car accident. So prayers for her and all who all who loved her in their grief. Other joys or concerns this morning? Hearing none, then let us turn to God in prayer. Gracious God, we praise you for your presence among us. We invite you in, Holy Spirit. Take and transform us Take and transform our societies, that broken people may find healing, that lonely people may find love, that bitter people may find peace, that fearful people may find hope. Come, Holy Spirit. 
take our world's leaders and governments and bring renewal, that communication can be open, that hostile relationships will evaporate, that a hunger for justice addresses the hunger for food felt by so many. Come Holy Spirit and fill your church that our worship may be pleasing to you, that our prayers will change us. Our prayers will change our minds instead of us trying to get you to change yours. That our lives will make a real difference to real people in a real world. God, we pray for all of those we have named here today, for those suffering from grief and loss. We pray for those living under the shadow of disease and illness. We lift up those who are watching their loved ones suffer. We pray for those who are seeking healing or answers. We pray for your healing touch. We pray for your guidance. We pray for our siblings of other faiths, and especially today, the Jewish community and our friend Cantor McCall. And we pray for all of those that we lift silently before you now. Come Holy Spirit, fill our lives with your presence so that more and more every day, all we do and say and hope will be an act of worship to you and an expression of love to others. Hear our prayers, no matter what language we speak, for we pray them all as people of the Spirit, and in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the one we call Christ, who taught us when together to pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise and body our spirit as we sing our closing song together.
I just want to point out that Susan didn't leave because she was upset. She left because she's got food downstairs. So everybody should stay and eat her food. <laughs> Friends, go out into the world and labor to bring forth new life. Speak the language of love. Dream dreams, pursue visions, and speak God's goodness to all those who will hear. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God that will never let you go and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen. Thank you.